So the future of AI, where are we and where are we headed? Again, I'm not just talking about me and Brock trying to sound smart on our own podcast. I am talking about extremely powerful machine learning softwares and programs. Right now, we're at the very beginning stage. The nickname for it is weak AI, also known as artificial narrow intelligence. So like we are essentially, when you think of the Netflix algorithm that predicts what you want to watch, right? Chat GPT even, some of these softwares, they're very specific, small task orientated things that are programmed. So the next stage would be what is nicknamed strong AI or artificial general intelligence. That would be closer to the exact intelligence of a human, right? This is where we think of AI robots, like in the movie Alien and Aliens, right? Like the, um, I forget what they're called, um, synthetics or something. Um, But that's like, Anything that could actually perfectly mimic a human would be artificial general intelligence. And that is the next stage. That is like, we're, not, we're nowhere close to that right now. Thank God. And then I'll, I'll right. Strong, I'll, strong AI is what we call that. Strong AI <laughs> is what we call that. Brock AI. And then the third one, just to define it and then we can discuss, is artificial super intelligence. Artificial super intelligence is essentially what you see in like the most advanced science fiction ever. It's the most complex form of AI you could think of. It's anything that would completely surpass human capabilities, right? Like we're talking about computing at a, at a rate that's faster than the brain, faster than the nerves and synapses in our brain that process information extremely quickly, essentially at the speed of light. So like this is Terminator level supercomputer beyond anything like scary yeah. level. What's what's that movie with Scarlett Johansson where she I think she takes that the the blue pill like the crystals maybe um and it it basically unleashes so much cuz you were using it as like drug mules basically her and two other people. Like limitless? It's like limitless but it's different where it caused her like entire body to just keep on there's different levels of consciousness. And so what it did through time is eventually, you know, Morgan Freeman was in it too. And, and he was saying, you know, that human consciousness either to pass on has to repre- reproduce and pass on that information through, you know, our, our physical bodies and, and verbally and whatever else, or it becomes uh, limitless. It doesn't ever die. It lives on forever. So she transformed basically into a giant supercomputer. Um, but even through that, that was, was it level. AI. It was it it or was it just like expanding the brain? That's We'd have to point. look it up yeah. anyway. But it, was it the film Lucy? Lucy, yeah. Was it, she a robot? She basically became one <laughs> by the level of yeah, robot so pill. I guess I kind of messed that up because it's not really technically that, but it is that in the sense of like she expands her intelligence expands so much. She became a. a a computer basically right right like it, that would be an example exactly of like literally anything that surpasses human intelligence yeah and and that was her abilities one of her abilities throughout time besides like she became she be able to shapeshift but she could search the internet across the board and get any information instantaneously right this is like ultron levels of super intelligence right where you are highly capable and very past human Um, But yeah, like, then think of how crazy that is to think about. Like, we are at weak AI, which is the first stage of AI. And like, we're already being able to like, like DeSantis posted a AI photo of Trump and Fauci hugging. And it's like, we're already at the point where people can like, one of my favorite YouTubers, Charlie Hopkinson, who hopefully is coming on the show, Charlie, Charlie. Going to get you on, buddy. But he um, does the deep fake uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon videos that are hilarious and everyone loves. And it's literally, you know, he's a comedian, he's an impersonator, but he does the voices like perfectly. And it literally looks like Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Anakin are just sitting there having a chat, watching TV. And he does that with AI? With deep fake AI, yeah. Yeah. 
And it's like, it's so funny and advanced of like, we're at the yeah, beginning stages and like things are already indistinguishable from yeah. reality. There was a, there was a guy on uh, uh, TikTok and I forgot what it is. It's like unreal Keanu Reeves or something like that, but it's Keanu Reeves, not Keanu Reeves doing all this like funny dancing and like random things. But there's people out there that, that truly believe that it really is Keanu Reeves doing all this weird stuff. Right. Yeah. Cause it's, it is indistinguishable except for the fact that he's doing things that probably Keanu Reeves would never do. Totally dude. And like, this is a perfect lead into the next segment essentially about the ethical responsibility with AI, right? What do we have to beware of? What do we have to look out for? There's already legislation being made. Like people have to protect their copyrights, their likeness, um, and privacy. They're like people are AI can only function with data. It needs input data and then it learns from that data. So like that's our data. That's our likeness. And like copyrights for artists, like you go to AI and it's like do you want this to look like a Van Gogh painting? You know, like Van Gogh can't defend himself, you know? Hmm. Um, but how, what do you think is one of the biggest things ethically that's a problem with AI or something we need to look out for? I mean, that's a tough question because I don't know everything about AI, but um, I just think it's that it's the same kind of age old question with, you know, something like Terminator or the Matrix or whatever it is, stuff that, you know, you hear people like Elon Musk and whoever talk about or warn you about AI getting to the point where it sees humans maybe as, uh, you know, unnecessary pieces to the puzzle. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but like if it gets batteries, so, you know, batteries, exactly. Um, but getting to the point where it can become destructive or you know globally destructive uh, because of some random you know ideal that it's generated for some whatever reason you know there's a million reasons why if you watch enough film and TV as to why that can get to that point but um, it's scary that it, it can invade everything you know you could have zero privacy left whatsoever and then if it gets to the point where it becomes dangerous you know it's it's uh it, I feel like it's a pretty scary thing. Another thing we have to look out for with AI is bias. Like if you literally went to chat GPT in the beginning and asked it about like political questions, I don't care how you feel politically. Everyone's welcome here. We're not going to shove politics down your throat. Like we, it's, we just, we don't enjoy the topic of politics is why we don't talk about it, but it clearly had a liberal bias. And what I'm against is any type of bias. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican or a Libertarian. It shouldn't, something that's acting as an authority figure for knowledge should not have a political bias. And whether it's Republican, Democrat, whatever, it just shouldn't lean one direction because it's posing as an authoritative figure and trying to teach you knowledge about something. So like... That was my biggest thing in the beginning is like, why is this bias? Well, again, you need to input data and people are inputting data one way or another. And it was leaning left for sure. Um, which again, I don't care how you vote, you know, but something acting as something that's teaching you something should not be biased. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it should be fair and used properly regardless of whatever that looks like um i mean yeah i don't i don't know exactly what you're referring to but if it's data that's inputted you know incorrectly or not that has a bias i think that's not uh maybe the best way to do it right <laughs> you know um whichever way it's leaning right like yeah. it doesn't matter it should be impartial and it should just try to give you normal information. I've it's, I think they fixed it because there were tons of YouTube videos about it and stuff like that. And people were like all up in arms, which of course half the country will be up in arms if it's favoring the other half, right? Like that's, it's as simple as that. Um, but yeah, just something to be cognizant of, of like, 
who's inputting the data and what are they inputting? Because yeah. it could, what if it's pro a certain policy and then well, this AI becomes the software in every single computer everywhere, but it's, let's say, pro-abortion or pro or anti-abortion, right? Like if it's leans one way on an issue, but is omnipresent, then people that don't feel that way on that issue are going to be against it, right? It's as simple as that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And subscribe and hit the bell for a whole lot more to come.